Well, hello everyone and welcome to another brutally honest review on the channel. This is one I'm extremely excited for. If you've been watching for a little while, you would have seen a few months back, I was lucky enough to enjoy the base 911 Carrera. It was a bright yellow car with a number plate A911 on it. I took that car to Wales and just had the most unbelievable experience. It was quite literally the best car I'd ever driven. I couldn't believe how good it was. And so I emailed Porsche back saying, that was incredible. I think my viewers enjoyed watching it as well. Can I now sample the top of the line, the Turbo S? And that is what we have here, also clad with a very special number plate, 911 Hull. Now this is a particularly nostalgic one for me because well, I remember watching Top Gear back in the day, reading magazines, seeing photos and videos with my favorite journalists and this number plate on the car. And the fact that I'm now here with the keys in my pocket to this car for the best part of a week is beyond me. I'm quite literally flabbergasted and extremely, extremely grateful. So next to me today then is a 911 Turbo S, which has long been the flagship of the 911 range. Although having said that these days, there are models which are more expensive like the GT3 RS, but it's not exactly cheap, the Turbo S. It's almost exactly twice as much as the base 911 Carrera with a list price of £180,000 before options. This particular one is specced to about 194 dollars with around 14Ks worth of options on it. The most expensive of which is the Heritage Design Pack, which is the interior. Five grand option, which gives you this gorgeous two-tone cognac interior with these beautiful houndstooth inserts on the seat. I'm absolutely in love with the interior of this car. In fact, it's already my favorite thing about it. And when I'm spending 180 grand on a Turbo S, I wouldn't even think twice about that 5,000 pounds for this interior. The color on the outside is adventurine green metallic, an absolute breath of fresh air when most of the Turbo or Turbo S as you see tend to be in a darker color. Maybe black seems to be the main choice for something like this, but what a classy specification this is. The guys at Porsche GB know how to spec a car, that is for sure. And just a quick note on where I am, you will have seen this before on my channel if you've been watching for a while. At any opportunity to come here, I take it. I always pinch myself when I come here because of its just incredible beauty. I'm actually parked right now at the Glencoe Mountain Resort, but this landscape behind me is genuinely one of my favorite in the world. And one of the best cars in the world I had to bring to what is, well, I think, one of the best roads, certainly in the United Kingdom, but maybe even in the world too. So yeah, we're here in, in Scotland, in Glencoe, Fort William's about 40 minutes or 20 miles that way. Glasgow is about two hours that way, Loch Lomond and up another 40 minutes back that way. So we're right in between those two places and it is just the most spectacular scenery anywhere. In fact, it looks more like the surface of Mars than most other places in the United Kingdom. So I'm extremely excited to have been able to bring the Turbo S here. Uh, I can't quite believe <laughs> I'm saying that. Let me very quickly just interrupt the review to say a big thank you to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement with over 70 high quality ingredients that support your physical and mental health. At this time of year during the winter in general, I don't know about you, but I personally struggle a little bit more with the darkness, not having as much energy, and just feeling a little bit unhealthy. Now, AG1 combines a blend of magnesium and vitamin Bs and lots of other things which can actually sustain your focus and energy throughout the day instead of something like caffeine, which gives you a bit of a hit. Also included within your daily dose of AG1 is vitamin C and zinc and functional mushrooms, which are all things which support your overall immune health. I've actually only recently started using AG1, however, it's very quickly become part of my daily routine, probably down to how simple and easy it is. You quite simply take one scoop of AG1, add it to two or 300 milliliters of water, I like a little bit more, and drink it. I try and do it first thing in the morning before I've eaten anything, because that way it can get to you in the best possible way. Your body can absorb more of it. But more importantly, for me, when I'm on trips, like in today's video in Scotland, I've got these travel packets which have my daily dose of AG1 in them, which I can bring with me, they're very portable. And then even when I'm traveling and when I'm away from home, I've got my daily dose of AG1 with me. If you'd like to try AG1 for yourself, then do so now by following the link in the description, which is www.drinkag1.com forward slash it's Joel and also included with your first purchase. They're going to throw in a year supply of D3 
and K2 vitamins along with five of those travel packets that I just mentioned. So do go ahead, click the link in the description to take advantage of this brilliant offer. Thank you so much to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. So if I may just very quickly show you around the car, because there's a few things on here which are worth pointing out. Um, Turbo S has a deployable front splitter. Now this comes out in Sport Plus mode, retracts away when you're not in that mode, but you can also deploy it manually. Uh, and this obviously aids with downforce. I mean, this car does have a top speed of 205 miles per hour. And so it can certainly use some downforce to help it stop taking off. Along with the splitter deploying uh, comes this wing out of the base, probably about three inches or so. It's always there, but it just lifts again to aid with that downforce. We have the sports exhaust on this car, which not sure how much difference they make because it still doesn't sound great if I'm totally honest. It's a two and a half grand option and it does change the design slightly. You get two tailpipes as opposed to four. This one has them in black. And then another really important thing on the car is the 315 section rear tires. Absolutely gargantuan these things along with the brakes, carbon ceramics, four piston on the rear, 10 piston on the front, 255 section tires on the front, much narrower than the rear on these Pirelli tires. Yeah, it's an extremely serious piece of kit, this thing, but one thing I do like about 911s in general is that they don't necessarily look like it. But I think that's one of the appeals of these Turbo S's is that you can literally outdo almost anything on the road without that much attention or that much noise in doing so. The other thing to point out, which has become quite apparent when driving this car, is its width over, <laughs> over two meters with the wing mirrors out. It's a wide car and you do notice that when you're on sort of A roads, uh, even on the motorway, you sort of notice how much of the lane you're taking up, especially when you're in one of those average speed checks and maybe passing a lorry, for example. It's a wide car and uh, gives the new Range Rover a run for its money in terms of how big it feels. But yeah, quickly before we go for a drive, let me just show you around the interior because it is really, it is worth writing home about actually, it's fantastic. It's got the extended leather on the door, that's a thousand pounds for that, but it does give you a really nice finish all the way around those doors with this houndstooth insert, which of course follows into the seat front and rear. It just looks exquisite, I think is the word. It looks extremely special and potentially makes up for the slight lack of excitement to the exterior. I think as soon as you step in to an environment like this, you know it's something pretty special. It's not your everyday car. This is really, really lovely. And like I say, I wouldn't think twice about specking this as an option on my 911. I think it's almost a must to have an interior like this. It really raises the cabin. If it was an option, I'm not sure it is. I'd probably go for the wheel in the cognac as well, along with the headliner, which is this beautiful suede. It's just fantastic. So this is the view you get from the commanding position of the Turbo S. It's, it's a lovely one, actually. You're greeted immediately by that analog rev counter in the middle, the green part showing you where the boost is for the turbo. Starts at around 2,750 RPM. And uh, it's, it's lovely as, as one would expect. Uh, it doesn't feel all that different to the base 911 Carrera, I have to say, other than we've got things like a really nice headliner, a bit more leather around this special interior and a few more options, but not a lot. Now, uh, this car has electronically adaptable memory seats. It has an electrically adjustable steering column, which I think is a must on a car of this value. See the eight speed automatic PDK transmission, which can be controlled with these uh, pretty nice paddles. Although I find they're a little bit firm. I'd like them to be a little bit more tactile and less hard to pull. Got a Manatino here where we can choose between drive modes. We have wet, normal, sport, sport plus and individual. If you press this in any mode but wet, it will give you the sport response, which gives you everything basically for 20 seconds. Um, it's essentially Sport Plus, I think, for about 20 seconds, but it's just a quicker way of accessing it. If you need to do an overtake, for example, we have got adaptive cruise control, although it's not standard on this £180,000 Turbo S. That is a over £1,000 option, and it works really well. I have to say, of all of the cars I've driven with radar-guided cruise, it's probably the best, the less least intrusive, should I say. And it's not that jerky, it's quite smooth in the way that it reacts to cars pulling out on you, etc., etc. Although as far as I can work out, I've not found a way that I can 
switch between adaptive cruise and conventional cruise, which I, I like to do because most of the time, actually, I don't want to be on adaptive cruise control. I only really like using that in traffic situations where you're stopping and starting it. It makes the drive a lot easier. But for general motorway cruising, adaptive cruise control can be frustrating, um, such as when someone pulls out on you or if you want to just cruise a little bit close up to the back of someone um, and then pull out not too early you know the adaptive cruise control tends to intrude before the point where you'd want to overtake anyway that's a whole separate issue but it's a bit of a shame uh, that it doesn't have that ability as far as i can work out also as you would come to expect for a car of this value you have automatic lights but i cannot believe this i don't think it has automatic wipers i was working or trying to work this out on the drive up yesterday and it was in intermittent mode most of the time which seems to do a good job of, of, of you know, clearing the windscreen, but I'm pretty sure it's not automatic, i.e. I have to flip the switch to actually get them to come on if it starts raining, which I cannot quite believe um, for any 911, let alone a Turbo S. It seems very strange that it doesn't have automatic wipers. I could be wrong though, and I could be missing something, but it certainly doesn't say auto anywhere on that store we have heated seats but uh, no cooling which is a shame and uh, buttons here to control various things of course we have the sports exhaust so we can switch it there uh, adaptive dampers uh, which can make the ride a bit firmer which is a little bit of an interesting one which i'll explain a bit when we drive the car obviously this central cup holder which is the bane of many manual 992 owners existence because if you have something in here and you need to change gear with your manual gearbox, it, it creates this weird situation where you have to bend your arm or change gear in, in an off position, which is a little bit of a design issue with these 992s. But at least for your passenger in there is another cup holder. But unlike the old generation cars, where you could push in here and get two cup holders, one would be close enough for the driver. So it would mean this is not an issue. But unfortunately, there is not that there. It's just the one... For the passenger we have the sports chrono pack along with automatically dimming uh, mirrors which again for a car of this value you would expect with 992 you can adapt what happens on the five displays you get in front of you although having said that when you don't have it in this reduced mode that i've currently got the car set up in you get these five screens from the driver's perspective you cannot see the two screens on the outside so you have to physically sort of lean forward and look to gather the information on those two screens um, depending on obviously your exact driving position and where the steering wheel is but i've certainly never found a position where i can see all five screens comfortably and, and also drive the car from a position i want to drive it in so a little bit of a strange design feature there but you can adapt what you do have on these screens, which is really nice. So you can choose between lots of different options, BAP, G-Force, pressures, all of this stuff. And there's your uh, configurable driving modes, Sport Plus, where the wing will come out, Sport Normal Wet, um, fuel, all of that sort of stuff. And you can choose what's on these screens. I do love mostly the big analog rev gauge in the middle. That's the only one that's really important. And um, it's just fantastic. If you've ever driven one of these, you know what I mean, but just the way in which the needle bounces around and, and interacts with the dial is, is really satisfying to watch. The central display obviously has things like Apple CarPlay, which is a must these days. Um, it's also one of the best in terms of these new cars infotainment um, systems. The main reason actually being because it still does have buttons down here for the essentials like your air conditioning, like your heated seats, still a physical button, which saves a lot of stress from trying to fiddle around on here if you just want to change the temperature by Celsius, like on the Range Rover, for example, or some of the newer Audis. But yeah, Apple CarPlay, it's got the Bose sound system, which does sound absolutely fantastic. You can configure lots of different things in here to do with the car, but most of which, like I say, is the exhaust or the adaptive dampers you can do in here. You don't really, I've never found I really need to go into here for anything to be honest the only slightly annoying thing is at night i like to lower the brightness of all of the displays sort of in front of me in any car i'm driving just so i can focus on the road a bit more and you do have to go through a few menus to get to that on this car i think in fact it's in here comfort oh no i don't even know actually it's it's quite hard and convoluted to find 
that if you're driving at night and you just want to you know dip the displays but anyway it, you know it's very good it's one of the better ones because of where it's placed it's very easy to reach as the driver and also it's extremely responsive it's no fuss and it just works so uh fantastic song there i'm very happy with that it's one of the better ones like i say um so yeah there's a bit more of a, a journalistic overlook of the interior i don't tend to go into much detail on, on things like that but i think it's worth a mention on a car of this value isn't it and also with a brutally honest review i want to point out any of the shortcomings with anything to do with the car the interior the exterior the way it drives etc and so when we talk about that a bit more as we drive the car you'll have a bit of context as to what I'm talking about with the interior. So with that then, that's probably enough sitting around chatting, isn't it? Should we take this Turbo S for a drive on some of my favorite roads? I think that sounds good, doesn't it? Let's, uh, let's get on and do that now. So if I'm gonna be able to even begin to explain to you what the Turbo S is like to drive, I'm first going to just have to demonstrate how fast it is. Now, the simplest way of doing such a thing is flicking it into Sport Plus mode. Spoiler being extended now. And what we're going to do is put our left foot on the brake, jab the throttle and launch it. And that's 60 miles an hour. It takes your breath away how fast this thing is. I mean, Calling it fast is an understatement, actually. It is ballistic. Up until 3,000 RPM, the car is quite sedate, but as soon as you get near that boost, it absolutely takes off. And if you do find yourself in eighth gear, cruising along, and you really need to just get the power all of a sudden, you hit this button in the middle of the Manatino switch, and you boot it. You're across borders just like that. So as everyone has come to know and expect from Porsche now, the PDK gearbox is instantaneous, it's faultless to be honest. It always does exactly what you want it to. In its automatic modes, it's very, very unintrusive and also thinks just like you would but when you do use the panels which is how I like to drive it most of the time there's no delay there's no brake and acceleration and also when you downshift under braking it doesn't really upset the car that's something that's a problem in uh, things like the Audi R8 for example sometimes you might select a, a third into second like that under heavy braking and it just upsets the car somewhat and the gearbox also doesn't really like it but in this that's never a problem it's always so compliant the 911 as well a really cool thing about it and this is the same in the base Carrera is it it drives like a supercar in the sense that the steering is very very fast you need minimal steering input to dart the car in a different direction which gives it that inherently race car-like feel. On the other hand, it's a little bit confusing with this turbo because it, it rides the road so well. You don't feel, I don't think, that much through the wheel. Although you've got that really direct response to your inputs, I'm not necessarily that aware of exactly what the wheels are doing, but more importantly, how close to the edge of their grip they are. With lots of driver-focused cars, you can really feel when you're on that limit or, or getting slightly close. And with this, I don't really ever get a sense of that, which doesn't necessarily encourage me to push on. But I was thinking potentially the reason I'm not getting a sense of this is because I, as a driver on public roads, simply can't get anywhere near the limit in capabilities of this car which is probably more likely to be the case but it's, it's not that communicative through the wheel and I feel like the base 911 was much better at this I don't know if this is because it's a heavier car or it's set up slightly differently but it's not fantastic and when you do select this PDCC button here it doesn't do all that much to alleviate that issue 
in fact I can't really feel any more that's going on with my wheels it just seems to make the ride a bit fidgety now when I stiffened the suspension in that base Carrera it did a lot actually to improve the experience of, of the drive when you were pushing on on a road like this it really woke the car up somewhat you, you got much more of a sense of, of what was going on underneath you but with this the PDCC button it doesn't really do that for me again I just feel it makes the, the ride more fidgety sort of bumps up and down you know how the F1 cars at the start of the 2023 season had that real issue with porpoising where they just bounce like this on the straights the drivers would be doing this it's that same sort of effect that the stiffened suspension seems to have on, on this turbo which wasn't the case in the base Carrera so again I don't know if that's down to the wheels on this car the tyre setup just the weight of, of, of the turbo as opposed to the base car or also just the way the suspension is set up but it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to really improve things for me having that on so I just tend to leave it off but that's just the thing isn't it is that to be honest it's probably because I'm nowhere near the level of driving that I'd need to be to benefit from these extra modes I think I'd be having to do 90 100 110 miles per hour on these sorts of roads to really feel any difference but when you're not so worried about going fast it's a, it's a lovely thing to drive as you would expect it drives just like any other 911 really the only thing I mentioned at the start of the video is that you do feel that slightly wider width in fact I was going into a driveway that I'm not that familiar with the other day and uh, I thought oh, gosh this is really narrow so you position the car in and got it through and thought oh thank goodness for that but then I looked in my wing mirrors and noticed that this thing has a really big bottom and it gets wider <laughs> and I thought oh I might be in a little bit of trouble here but I did manage to get the car through but you're acutely aware of how big this thing feels like even here going wall on that side cars on this side I'm slightly breathing in clenching hoping that nothing goes thwack it does feel awfully big and look we've got a Range Rover going for a double overtake on me but that's the thing I'm not too bothered about that I know that at any given point I could absolutely embarrass that Range Rover but it does such a wonderful job at driving along peacefully and uh, my wife and I, well I did all the driving, but we came up to Glencoe all the way from Buckinghamshire in one go yesterday, about 460, 470 miles. We did it with a 10 minute stop just for a comfort break. And I'll be totally honest, I was completely fine. I thought I'd be absolutely exhausted, unable to move my back, thought I'd have a slip disc. But it's remarkably comfortable, this thing, because it is just so, underutilize this engine at, at all times within the UK speed limits it just it just makes it completely effortless when you're when you're cruising but I think that is a blessing and a curse because I just can't help but thinking what is the point in having all of this power under my right foot if I just can't use it I mean, for example we're doing 50 miles per hour now seventh gear if I floor it nothing happens uh, but if I want to like enjoy the performance I can barely get down to second gear because the top of second gear is almost 65 miles an hour so if you ever feel like you want to sort of just batter it through first second and third I, who knows how far I think at the top of third you're probably going to be over 100 miles an hour in this car and uh, it's a little bit of a shame really because it never really feel like you can properly extract all the performance and you saw when I did that launch control earlier I mean it's two and a bit seconds to 60 so you've got such a quick burst of excitement and adrenaline but then it's over unless you want to risk losing your license which in this day and age is so easy to do so for the driving that I've done about a thousand miles or so of it over the past week in this car in this country I've actually found the power to be more frustrating than enjoyable because I just cannot enjoy it and if I was to put my foot down I just feel like I'm looking over my shoulder the whole time because of just how quick and how insane the speeds get in this thing 
And what I first thought when I got in this car is, well, this interior is absolutely gorgeous. But the next thought I had once I got on the road when I picked it up from Porsche is it just doesn't feel any different to the base 911. And you've got to remember that base 911 is almost, well actually it's more than 90,000 pounds cheaper than this car. That particular car was specced up to around 90 grand, but now in 2023, at the end of 2023, the base price of those crows have actually gone up. So you'd be looking at about 100,000 pounds for that car if you were to buy it today. But that is more than 90 grand cheaper than this car. And 99% of the time you're driving on the British public roads, there's almost no noticeable difference. Less the gorgeous view of the arches, the flared arches and the spoiler at the back, the nice heritage interior, the green dials, and the knowing that you've got all that power and the odd chance that you get to do the launch control, which is always a laugh. 99% of the time I'm just thinking, it's kind of pointless. And that brings me on to something else as well. When I did a bit of a run in the 911, I drove to Wales, did 200, 300 miles in a day, very chilled out, podcast style driving, just cruising along. I managed to get the mid to high 30s in terms of miles per gallon. I think it was around 37 miles per gallon I'd had over a 200 mile run. I did a very similar sort of run in this yesterday. A bit further, 400, 450 miles, but mostly motorway, mostly at around 70 miles per hour. And I think the, the final figure, and I forgot to take a photo, but it was about 26.4 miles per gallon. So not only are you paying a huge chunk of money up front to get yourself into a Turbo S over a Carrera, you're actually paying every day for the fuel as well. I mean, 10, 11 miles per gallon is a big difference in terms of that cruising economy. And like I say, for all intents and purposes, when you are doing that sort of driving, it makes no real difference whether you're in a Turbo S or whether you're in a 911 Carrera. I wanna just flip everything on its head though and, and quickly point out that this is ultimately, it, it, incredible car. Uh, words can't really describe how fantastic it is to drive. It's exciting, it's engaging, it's so fast, it's so comfortable. It will literally do anything you ask of it, but I have to be totally transparent to you and, and say that I cannot shake the constant thought of, actually, I had more fun in that yellow Carrera. That car being lighter, uh, I don't know if it's down to that or to other things, it, it was a bit more communicative, it was a bit more playful to drive as well because it was rear wheel drive as opposed to this one being all wheel drive. And also, the base Carrera at 380 horsepower I thought was going to be a little bit lacking in performance, but it, it really wasn't. I, I wouldn't even consider needing more than that. And actually what it meant is that you could pull through the gears for a good amount of time and not be breaking the speed limit. You've got to enjoy all of the performance pretty much all of the time. There's a few other slight minor issues that I've noticed just from a sort of daily drivability perspective. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a lack of storage going on. Now you've got these door pockets here which are good for like your sunglasses, maybe your mobile phone if it's not plugged in. But there's no real space to put any sort of big water bottles, which I always like to have a lot of water when I'm doing long drives. And this is the sort of car you would do long drives in. Got this little central compartment here. It's pretty hard to get to, especially if you're driving, and it also doesn't like to stay up. That was the same on the other 992 that I had recently as well. Just a minor thing. The exhaust, I mentioned it earlier, but it really doesn't sound that good. There's not all that much difference between having the, the valves open and the valves closed. And I, I hate to bang on about it, but I really do have to draw a comparison to that base Carrera. I would argue that that sounded even better. Don't know if it's just the smaller turbo, maybe there's less sound deadening on that slightly lighter car. There's none of this sort of really fancy headlining, but it really sounded a lot better. You, felt like there was a lot more induction from that engine that made its way into the cabin. Whereas with this, it's almost like the same induction, but it's just been muffled somewhat. And for a car that's this fast and this expensive, I feel like I'd want to 
have a bit more noise to go along with it. I know it's not meant to be a screaming Lamborghini or a straight piped Ferrari, but it's just slightly too far the other way, for me at least. There's a number of amazing things that we can talk about, like these seats. They're so, so comfortable. I mean, the fact that I was able to drive up here in pretty much one go without any sort of issues, it's really, really comfortable, this car. The driving position is just spot on, as it is with all of these, well, any Porsche, actually. The view you get out of these big windows is fantastic. I love the view out the back of the wing, especially when it's up, and the view out the side. You see the wide bottom of this car, which is lovely, but generally the visibility, and, and thanks to these small windows, the blind spots are almost non-existent on this car. Uh, just makes it extremely easy and pleasurable to drive. I also absolutely love the way this thing looks from the outside. I think almost that the base car is a little bit too understated. Okay, it had that yellow paintwork and the great number plate, but apart from that, it's a little bit boring. As with all of these cars that have these sort of driver focus screens in front, I wish there was a way to have Apple CarPlay displayed on here. You can have obviously the Porsche map on this screen, which is nice, but it would be nice to have the ability to have your Waze or have your Google Maps or your Spotify or whatever you're controlling on this screen as well. Just a minor, minor thing. So apart from those little minor things, there's really nothing else to complain about. I mean, the 911 Turbo S, is pretty much the perfect car. It is faster than you'll ever need. It's comfortable. It does turn the right amount of heads. But its biggest issue, honestly, is its own little brother, that 911 Carrera, the base car that's basically a hundred thousand pounds cheaper than this. You could have two of them for the price of one Turbo S. And having experienced them both for a, a long period of time, I can almost see no reason to buy the Turbo S, but every reason to go and buy a 911 Carrera, because in terms of value for money, they are fantastic. With this, I just feel a level of frustration that I can't use everything that I've paid for. I know this is the better car, and I know it's the more expensive one, and I know it's the one I should have loved even more, but honestly, uh, I wish I could have another week with that yellow one. It's got me thinking, though, I think, actually, the, the peach of the whole 911 lineup is the GT3, because it's almost slap bang in the middle between the base Carrera and the Turbo S in terms of power, at around 500 horsepower. It's still got that light, raw feel, that the Carrera does, and it has that 9,000 RPM red line and that really raw noise. In fact, I have driven a, a 992 GT3, but only the Touring. I've never driven the big winged one, which I am now desperate to do so, actually. That is almost certainly the next car I'll be asking Porsche for. I would love to experience the GT3 or GT3 RS winged cars because I do I think that is probably for me at least where my heart would lie with this 911 range this turbo is just too fast it just is too fast and because of the way it's set up with the boost not being till around 3000 rpm and the pretty long gears you you can't enjoy the fact that it's that fast on British roads so I'm going to do now what this car does best and just enjoy these spectacular views and cruise along. What an incredible opportunity this is to drive, you know, one of the world's best cars, the king of the performance cruisers, through some of the most incredible scenery one can imagine. I'm incredibly lucky and grateful to Porsche GB for this opportunity. I, I really cannot thank you all enough. And uh, you, the viewer as well, for watching these videos, making this all possible. It's really, something I'm so so eternally grateful for and I'll continue to do my best to, to make these reviews that are not just focused on how fast the car is or how amazing it is 
Um, it really sort of goes into the nitty gritty of, of the everyday things that might be really good, also might be a little bit disappointing. And I hope I've got across my point here with this Turbo S that ultimately it is just wonderful and almost faultless. And its only actual downfall is not necessarily with the car, but just with the British roads. So there we go. Thank you all for watching this video. Thanks again to Porsche GB for this amazing loan. I can't quite believe I'm driving 911 Hull, but there we go. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Thank you.